So I want to go over how the pelvis strains. This is the pelvis here. And there's several routes out of the pelvis. This is the vena cava. This is the inferior vena cava, abdominal um, vena cava. And it breaks off into the common iliac vein, which breaks off into the internal and external iliac vein. So the internal iliac vein is, is the one that's most responsible for draining the pelvis. The internal iliac vein right here. We also have the ovarian veins, which are secondarily responsible for draining the pelvis. We don't have it shown here. There's a superior rectal vein and a sacral vein um, that uh, go into the inferior mesenteric vein. They're also um, responsible to a lesser degree um, for draining the pelvis. And then finally, we have this very interesting situation involving the pudendal vein um, where there's actually drainage into the long saphenous, um, then the femoral, and then up into the external iliac vein. And so those are main drains out of the pelvis. So now we're going to go into those a little bit more. So why doesn't the pelvis drain? So these are kind of like diagnosable conditions that I'm talking about here, but before anything is diagnosable, you have a functional condition, which can still be highly problematic. And in natural medicine, we can treat it. We don't need it to get real bad before we can intervene. We can treat earlier, so that's good. So one of the things that can cause backup into the pelvis um, and cause pelvic congestion is Maytherner syndrome. And that's when there's overlap and compression of the left um, common iliac artery over the vein. The, the artery always goes over the vein, but if there's compression, then that vein will not have the diameter that it needs to have in order to carry the blood out of the pelvis and up. So Maytherner syndrome. I commonly find this, um, not the syndrome because I'm just doing it by palpation, but I'll commonly find that there's like a little knot there where there's like pulling and congestion, there's hard work in that area where the left common iliac vein um, is being compressed by the left common iliac artery. Another thing that you'll see is nutcracker syndrome, which is um, when there's the um, renal vein is compressed, the left renal vein is compressed, and so then you get back up of the uh, left uh, ovarian vein and into the pelvis. So you, you can have a straight up nutcracker syndrome or you can have tension on the renal vein and that will, that, you know, not a straight up nutcracker syndrome, but there's enough, there's enough tension in the system that you're not getting adequate drainage and you're getting back up. So you can get this with a ptosis or falling down of the left kidney that will compromise drainage of the left ovarian vein and back up the blood into the pelvis um, or other things like that. Um, so it doesn't have to be a full-on diagnosis. It can be still at a functional level um, and give you plenty of problems to write home about. Um, also, um, a hysterectomy is going to make it harder to drain the pelvis in some cases because you're taking out some of the drainage system. An oophorectomy could um, remove even more um, of that drainage system um, and compromise the um, ovarian um, vein itself. Um, and so, so these are things, and then you know, you got to think about any kind of adhesions along the way. Um, if you've had a cesarean, if you've had an appendectomy, if you've had gallbladder surgery, if I mean, <laughs> it could be a million things that it could be, you know, chronic constipation. It could be um, any kind of um, gut inflammation that caused a lot of adhesions and makes it difficult to to drain the pelvis, it could be a million different things. All of these things can cause backup into the into the pelvis, 
um, that make drainage difficult and then irritate and annoy the heck out of that um, pudendal, pudendal um, nerve. 